who has just taken a punch in the stomach a few minutes ago. 33 wins, no losses, 27 knockouts. Up to this point in his career, everything you want. He's the full package in a fighter, hoping to put on a show and hoping to increase his value in the world of boxing. Well, this is the fourth time he's defended here in Tijuana, and uh, he hopes that it will be as successful as the last three. Tail of the tape, let's take a look at it. Hamili in a, a hurry to get this chance to win a championship, 27 years old, just a tad shorter and just a little bit shorter in the reach. And the interesting thing about that is he will be the one probably trying to box on the outside, I think, and uh, yet doesn't have the advantage in reach and height. And again, we take a look. These would be the WBC rules, which are uh, very similar, except if there's a clash of heads and uh, uh, it causes the cut and they have to go to the scorecards, it will be after six rounds. Get it going and set it up to Michael Buffer. Thomas y Caballeros, Barbaron, Top Rank Incorporated con Corona Extra, La Cebresa Más Fina. Presentamos 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. Thanks and bye. The World Boxing Council President, Jose Suleiman, WBC Supervisor Ringside. Ariosto Manrique, also sanctioned by the Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico Boxing Commission, President, Senor Roberto Magana, Senior Physician at Ringside, Dr. Ramon Cruz, Boxing Directors, Rigoberto Martin Del Campo, Jose Luis Esqueda, Timekeeper at the Bell and counting for the knockdown seconds, Sergio Fernandez. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Tommy Kazmarek, Chuck Hassett and Tony Castellano. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, working for the 118th time in a world title bout, World Boxing Hall of Fame referee, Marty Dinkin. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Thomas y Caballeros está listo. Con el torero de Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Thomas y Caballeros. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! In Asina Azul, in the blue corner, wearing black with silver, is Viendo Negro con Plateado. He weighs 121 and one half pounds, pasando 121 y medio, his professional record. 39 victories, including 30 knockouts, with four losses. Damas y caballeros de Paranaque, Filipinas, presentamos el retador, Renante Camille. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, en la esquina Cantradia. Vistiendo negro con blanco, pesando 122 libras, at 122 pounds, con un record profesional, invisible, en 32 combates, undefeated in 32 bouts, all victories including 26 knockouts, and he is rated among the best pound for pound in the world today. Damas y caballeros, aquí presentamos El campeón mundial invisible de los pesos super gallos de Tijuana, Baja California, México. De la zona norte, Eric, el terrible They are getting Renate Hamili's 
considerable group out of the ring. He had quite an entourage in the ring with him. And now we're set to the instructions. Well, they had to bring a few friends to town. Yeah, really. <laughs> Final, final instructions from Marty Dinkin, a scheduled 12 rounder for the WBC Super Bantamweight title, now held by Eric Morales. The crowd is on its feet. Round one. Morales in the white trunks, Hamili in the black trunks. These first minutes, so important for Hamili to get his bearings against a huge puncher in Morales, a guy who can take you out early. Hamili, who said he was going to use the center of the ring and is doing that, but also is leaving himself open by throwing big shots early in this fight. He definitely said he would not fight this fight on the ropes. How that fits into Morales' strategy, we'll soon see. He's going after Eric Morales. Absolutely. He's a tall fighter. Morales doesn't fight that many tall fighters in his weight division, as tall as him. So that's a, a plus for Hamili. Wide punches from Hamili so far. And it's one of the things Morales says people saw on the tapes, and that's not a good thing against Eric Morales. Oh, big, oh, big right big. hand. Big haymaker coming right there that, that missed from Hamili on the outside. And a nice counter right that landed by Eric Morales. Morales lands one on the chin up against the ropes as Hamili where he says he does not want to be. Round one halfway done. You can almost feel Eric Morales trying to see what Hamili has to offer here. We're starting to see the jab much more from Eric Morales in recent fights. Hamili's not afraid to throw, though, Al, and he, as he did just there. Going after Morales early. Yes, he is. People to think of Morales as just some slugger is a real misnomer. Look at how well he keeps his hands up, brings his hands back to position after he throws. Eric Morales, a very well schooled technician in the ring. Inside 50 seconds, round one. Those punches not effective, but Morales seeing an opening and trying to take advantage. Amili getting through this first round. He landed, he was hit with one really good right hand, but other than that, has done a pretty good defensive job and not been hit with anything huge except for that one punch. He's traveling a long way for a shot. He said he's wanted for a long, long time. Felt like he was being pushed aside. He is the number one contender in the WBC. 10 seconds left in round one. A scheduled 12 round. We're going to take you inside Eric Morales' corner. Now. You got to walk him to your right side. Try the hook, throw the top, feint on the bottom, and then throw the hook to the top. It's not that difficult, he's just floating around. You can knock him down in this round. <coughs> Don't press so hard. Bring him into the center of the ring. Feint to the bottom, and then go up top. We need that right, up top.
Now I'll ask uh, Al Burns to, to interpret those instructions for him. What are they trying to get him to do, Al? Well, I think they, they think that if he faints to the body, Hamili will bring his guard down, and then he can go upstairs. They want him to go downstairs eventually a little bit, and they, they think ultimately that's going to open up the top. But he's not fainting much, Eric Morales, and he's capable of doing that. We're in round two of this WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. Eric Morales looking to ignite the local Tijuana crowd. Makes his home here. Proud of the fact that he brings fighters here to fight him. He really has done that. His fourth defense in Tijuana of the seven that he is, he is making. And uh, he wants to show the world that there's opportunities here in Tijuana. He brings commerce to the city when he fights. And um, good for him. It's his hometown. And certainly the atmosphere here at the Bull Ring is a great atmosphere for boxing match. Camilli throwing a lot. Not much getting through the defense of Morales. But he is throwing a lot. Good right Morales, hand gets in. Morales is looking to counter. You can see he's not in any kind of trouble. But is looking for his spot. Hamili so far a pretty busy fighter now. Yeah, he has been. And that's good for him because he's he's keeping Eric Morales off guard by throwing punches. If you let a puncher just load up and come to you, you're in trouble. Now he's bullying his way forward behind his shoulder. There comes Morales. Hamili beginning to get a sense of the power that he's facing tonight. Morales using the jab. We saw him use it in his last uh, title defense against Ramirez. He, he boxed a lot in the last four or five rounds of that fight. Big hook lands by Morales. He's got power in both hands. That's what's tough when you're facing him. Pick that one off pretty cleanly. Morales leaning up against the rope, looking to counter. Camille just keeps throwing. There's a short inside right that found its mark. He's got a little bit, a little bit of a backpedaling going on by Hamili. And ten seconds left in round two. Morales has found a combination that will work, a double right hand, and he's been working. As we look at Hamili in his corner, he has got to keep smothering Morales for another round or two because if he gets a punching room, I think Morales has found the key to landing a couple of uppercuts and straight right hands. And I think in the last round, he tasted the power of Morales in a big way. Breathe in. You got a box. Have speed. Don't let him pressure. And don't use the ropes that much. Well, now that Morales, as we enter round three, has found a combination to see if he can crack open the safe now and get the job done. You know, Hamili told us he thought Morales was going to move and run on him. I, I never thought that was going to happen, and it certainly isn't. What Eric Morales is doing, though, is showing a little bit of movement, enough lateral movement, and showing us what he wants to show, that he is a boxer puncher, that he's not just a guy that goes in and lands a big shot, and uh, if he doesn't, he's incapable of doing other things. Very important to him to shed that, that label. Very confident fighter. And he should be as he steps up. There's once again the right. As the world learns more and more about him. But a lot's been put on him, Al. 
yeah, people are already comparing him to Chavez and saying he's the next great Mexican champion. But I think he's handling it with uh, a certain degree of aplomb, and I think he knows that unless he keeps working hard and winning fights, that's going to all go away. Just on the inside. You get the sense he's steadily trying to figure out what he needs to do here while Mealy is steadily just throwing punches and coming in. Mealy is, un, is undaunted by what's going on here. He's not intimidated at all. Right, Morales and lands a nice right hand. Hamili pushes a lot of his punches, though. He doesn't throw them with a lot of snap. And that diminishes some of the power. There's an uppercut that landed. There's another combination that landed. Hamili seems to take it so far, but he's backing up now. Another combination. The right got into the chin. He lunged and got hit with an uppercut. And those were A punches by Morales. Those were not secondary punches. Those were the kind of punches Morales usually hurts people with, and Hamili was able to take those shots. I think he was stunned momentarily, but he didn't go anywhere. He acted like he'd been there before. Yeah, and I don't think he has been. I, I don't think he's taken punches like Morales can throw, but he was able to deal with it. About 30 seconds left here in round number three of the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. It's been a good round, though, for Morales. He's landed some very good punches and uh, figured out a little bit what to do with Pamili when he lunges in. He's going to try the uppercut again and work inside if he can and step back out. Trying the fake that his corner was talking about. 